hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. We are together again. Okay, this video is small meals that can really get you through the last week of the month. So there's exactly a week left. And so I, I uh, was planning on baking chicken and I thought, no, nah, you're too tired. It's too late and you're too tired. Okay, so uh, I want to talk to you about these small meals. Okay, if you've been following me, you know the story. There was a guy that used to be in McDonald's every single day, and I used to try to talk to him. And this is some leftover tea. And I used to try to convince him to go to the food pantry. And he, and he just wouldn't go uh, he said he could live with his daughter but she couldn't afford it and i thought i said well um could you live in the garage if you went to the food pantry and got food well it was just beyond him so finally he went to the park and he got a free sandwich a small fruit or a small vegetable and a can of coke and within a few months he was like transformed all the all the food really he had except for gallons of coffee he used to drink was uh, a sandwich so um, I bought sandwiches here they are this is a good sandwich from Walmart and I think you get uh, six for about uh, $12 so I bought two boxes and I had bought uh, sandwiches from um, from Dollar Tree too, and I sometimes I eat them a lot, and sometimes they just sit there. But let me show you. See, this is a pretty decent sandwich, so you won't starve. So I'll start by zapping it one minute. A lot of times, one minute will will do it. And then you just have to uh, zap the meat a little bit longer. So I have a sandwich, a small fruit, or a small veggie. So this is a banana smoothie I made, and it was three quarter cup milk that I got from the food pantry, three quarter cup uh, Greek yogurt that I made when I bought um, a gallon of milk at grocery outlet for $1.97. I made a lot of yogurt because I learned at the food pantry, if you don't have that much meat, if you, you can get by, if you have, um, if you have dairy. And I got last month, I, or last week, I got bananas at the, um, I don't know where I put the bananas. I should, oh, here they are. So uh, I froze them and I put them in the freezer. And I was planning on making, uh, here's the Walmart cheeseburgers. See, they're nice big sandwiches too. Uh, I haven't cleaned the uh, freezer. You know, uh, your stuff will stay for a long, long, stay good for a long time in the freezer. Uh, as long as it doesn't all fall out and get messed up. Okay, let's see. Oh, this smells good. There's a slight... Oh, that one's not done. Okay, this one's done. So let me zap it for one more minute. Uh, what you have to do is... What I do with these smoothies is I just let them cool at... I mean, uh, thaw, and then I eat them around the edges as the... Um, as they thaw, and so it's a good way to get off ice cream. So, okay, so just by getting a sandwich, and then I had nice uh, veggies at, from the food pantry, and I wanna mention something. Okay, I got one of these, Not the one I got was a lot better, but I got this for 90 cents, and I have never bought these. So uh, I saw these for uh, 99 cents or something, so I thought, I'm going to get this. So what I'm doing, oh, I think it's ready. So what I'm doing is I'm learning from the food pantry. I promised myself when I was older 
I would do what I had to do so I could survive. Let's see. Uncured ham and cheese lunch kit. And there is some, uh, what are these things? Uh, Kobe cheese chocolate flavored bear cookies. Mm. Well, I'm not going to open them and I'll tell you why. Okay, so a sandwich, a small fruit and veggie, and a can of Coke or tea. I do have Coke, though, at all times. This looks good. Let's have it. Okay, so um, here it is. Uh, the hamburgers are good. Nice hot sandwich, two dollars. Okay, now um, the other one is soup and crackers. So here we have uh, crackers with cheese and ham. And then I froze this. It's not quite frozen yet. This is the tomato soup. So I have soup. If I was really hungry, I could eat soup too. And then I made this. I'm going to freeze this too as soon as the tomato soup is frozen. This is the uh, curry, rice, and mushroom soup I made. So I have at least two servings of soup. So soup and crackers. Uh, a lot of times I have crackers. These meals I usually eat in the middle of the night. I have crackers uh, with peanut butter and cheese and like lunch meat. So soup and crackers. Okay, now remember the Oslo diet. The Oslo diet is a great small meal. So when I went to the uh, food pantry, they gave me a lot of um, a lot of um, really good quality bread. So it was bread and butter. Oh no, oh here it is. It was bread and butter, a small piece of cheese, like those kits. And I put the, I, I didn't eat the ch little piece of cheese I got, so I put it in, in the, um, I put it in the um, freezer. I can't show you, but it looked to be about one ounce. So you would have your bread and your butter, and hopefully if you're a senior on some kind of fixed income, you go to the food pantry. You might be going, I don't need to go to the food pantry. You probably do if you have a really, if you have less than $291 a month food, that means people on EBT are eating better than you are. Oslo diet, wheat bread and butter, a small sandwich with three vegetables, three little pieces of vegetables, a bottle of milk, a piece of fruit, and the cheese that I didn't write on here. So that is why I stockpile cheese. I mean, cheese sandwiches are good. A quesadilla is a cheese sandwich. So um, soup, crackers, an Oslo diet would be basically a cheese um a cheese sandwich and then i have cookies and tea okay today i went to walmart and i got these cookies for i already ate four so i don't need to be eating more cookies but these were marked down there was two boxes some of them were not marked down this low and this doesn't expire until five nine so i will freeze these so, uh, if you like to eat cookies and tea, and if I eat these for lunch, I will just save the little cookies, and then one night I will have those. I might freeze them with those. Okay, so those are the small meals that are really, I have more small meals. I'll get to them in a minute. Okay, we were going through our bills. See how this is melted? This is the time to eat it. So we have two households. 
in both of them, we found ways to cut our bills by $200 each of us. So between us, that was $400. So um, L-I-H-E-A-P is a federally funded program that helps low-income households uh, pay for heating and cooling in their homes. Okay, and also I forgot to tell you, fry bread and tea. A lot of times I like to eat that. All you need is one cup flour, uh, one cup hot water or milk, and sometimes I add a quarter um, cup um, powdered milk to my flour, or you can use your whey if you make cheese. And so you need hot liquid, a cup of flour, one and a half teaspoons baking powder for sure, and a quarter teaspoon um, salt. You mix it all together to create a soft bowl, and then you put a little oil in the bowl, flip it around, cover it for 20 minutes, and fry it in hot oil. So you can get by on that. I mean, I eat that a lot of times just because I like it. I don't think it's a good idea to, okay, you go, oh, don't eat this, don't eat that. No, just get a regular diet and don't go cuckoo. All right. I mentioned that the inflation was brutal on uh, utilities in California. So, um... We have utility payment releases that go in and remove a certain amount of money from your utility bill, and those are starting, it's going to be twice yearly. So I guess that'd be once for summer, once for winter, but I'll take that. So between this utility uh, rebate and us going through, um, let's see, there was a um, subscription to... Um, some paper, uh, we got a, redux a reduction on your our internet, and then, you know, I was going to the food bank, and I've already saved $120 on that, so right there is going to pay for my gas for sure, and so also my food is paid for, and I have good food, so be thinking about that, so go through your bills, and you know, Especially, I'd be looking at food, utilities, and gasoline. Is there any way I can reduce it? Okay, so now I want to talk to you about uh, the food pantry. Okay, I noticed they gave us these hearty vegetables. So I will show you. Uh, here is my uh, spaghetti squash, and I will eat that. Um... So the first week I got an eggplant, zucchini, artichokes, and six red potatoes. So that was a lot of food. Then the next week uh, we got a sweet potato and regular potato. So I still have regular potatoes. What is good about these uh, vegetables is you can have them for a week, for two weeks, for a month. Um, so uh, with the sweet potato, I just boiled that in water and then I had some hot dogs and I had some homemade um butter on my sweet potato and then this last week we got the spaghetti squash which i stuffed three carrots and two potatoes so i today i was at walmart and i said you know what uh these are really worth the money i bought this is an acorn squash and this is uh a butternut squash so with these, I can make soup, I can stuff them, I can bake them, I can roast them. So I bought those two things today because even though I'm going to the food pantry, you don't know what you're going to get. So you want to get a little food in the house. So the, um, the acorn squash was $3.37. And the butter nut squash was four ninety of three. So what I want to do is make sure I have enough potatoes, sweet potatoes, these hearty squashes, um, the artichoke. I made some delicious artichoke um, soup. Um, okay, and then I got carrots. Okay, so okay, so that. 
So I want to think about these vegetables. Okay, for the dairy, they gave us a dozen eggs, half gallon of milk, eggs, and peanut butter, which I didn't take that week because I had stockpiled peanuts. And then uh, the next week we got, so I didn't take the eggs and peanut butter. And then this last week we got a half a gallon of milk because I got there late, but I thought that's okay. well worth buying okay so we had hearty vegetables dairy and then what I got was I got much better uh, healthy grains than I normally buy two packages of bagels bagels are expensive one box of oatmeal and that oatmeal was four four sixty three for a box two loaves black bread the second week and then this last week I got the traders Joe's cereal and the bagels that I showed you. Okay, so uh, I want to mention today I bought this package of 12 chicken legs. I got this, I think, I got this at Grocery Outlet. And I also got the little uh, package of, um, I'll be keeping my eye out for these. I got those at Grocery Outlet. And then I got the butternut squash and the, um, the acorn squash at Walmart. Okay, then, so I got chicken. Last week, I bought hamburger because one day at a time on a budget, she got um, hamburger, chicken, and something else at the food pantry. So I bought what she bought. Hamburger, bacon. I bought two packages of bacon for uh, 97 cents each, so I have enough bacon for a while. I bought a big package of hot dogs. A lot of times when it's late like this, I like to eat hot dogs. I like hot dogs and grits. I fry hot dogs in, um, in oil with uh, scrambled eggs and toast, hot dogs in a can of chili, um, hot dogs, you know, with um, anything, uh, french fries. And then uh, tuna, so chicken, hamburger, uh, bacon, hot dogs, and tuna. So let me show you this page in case you want to take a screenshot. Some people are new to this. First of all, it is my opinion that uh, the cost of living is not really going to go down. Or why are they giving us these rebates all the time? Okay, I, I reported the uh, news to you guys about the Quaker Oats, and I couldn't find anything because uh, my notes were a big mess. Quaker Oats has 10,000 employees owned by Pepsi-Cola, Danville Quaker Oats plant. Uh, they had, they closed the whole plant because the whole plant was impacted by a recall on dozens of products, 510 employees, not 100, losing their jobs, and the, pro the products seem to be granola bars. So what is in granola is oatmeal. So okay, and so on granola bars, a lot of times you get those marked down, and who knows who has the contaminated ones. But what I was doing is I was eating oatmeal every day, and then I was eating eggs almost every day so i want to back off on those two products they're not for me every two days because both could contain salmonella so you got to watch this is the thing when they want to push the vegetables okay these these hearty vegetables come with a strong peel that protects them but they can still be tainted so we want to think about that uh so there was the presence of feces in the fields where the grains were growing so I wanted to know, was it human feces? Was it runoff from like chicken um, growing, stuff like that? So, but I couldn't find out. Okay, now I also was tired and I repeated the, um, the consumerism thing very badly because I couldn't find my notes. 18th century Northwestern Europe, Western Europe, economists witnessed that the expansion and increase in wages 
Uh, so there is an increase in the wages. This isn't just like consuming stuff that we want that's supposed to make us feel better. It's supposed to be accompanied by an increase in wages. As a result, families started buying unnecessary commodities for their places. The mid 18th century marked the beginning of consumerism movement or the consumer revolution. Buying more non-essential items is a great idea if you can afford it. But when you're like going out to eat, you're consuming luxury items uh, that you can't really afford and you kind of like know it in the back of your mind. Okay, so now I wanna to talk to you. So what I did is I got late to the, um, the food pantry which is fine and so luckily i had some food storage so i want to show you uh so i had um corned beef and what i like to do with this is i just put it in uh, like uh one of these pie pans i peel a couple potatoes i i pour some oil and i bake it and then i have my homemade butter and you know i have my veggies from the um food pantry and then these cooked hams. Now this is, uh, they're saying, wow, they're saying this is, this is uh, 12 ounces. Okay, they're saying one serving, but what I do is I have um, one quarter pound per, per meal. So this would be three servings for me. And then these cooked hams are, uh, how many servings? Uh, this is about uh, three servings. Yeah, that'd be about right. So what I do is I bake them and then I have sweet potatoes or potato salad. So, you know, those are good. And then I started buying better tuna. I gave uh, one of my friends some of my tuna and salmon who was sick. And you know, when you're sick and you're not with it, it's nice to be generous as well. All right, now I have some cheap meals. Uh, macaroni and cheese and hot dogs that's cheap or fish sticks or you can put um, anything in these uh, and then you know I got the um, okay the food pantry gave me uh, 12 ounces of vegan sausages so I could fry them I could make this gravy and I could put that on my uh, bagels if you're seniors or if you're poor in your house find the uh, food pantries and um, start going. Okay, this cereal that I got at the food pantry was two boxes for $22. So um, I want to start buying uh, two things and I forgot to tell you when I was reporting on the Quaker Oats. Bran flakes because I can grind that in the blender and make my um, my uh, brown bread, and then I want to get some good cornmeal. What I'll do is I'll lurk around when I find a nice big bag at grocery outlet. I'll buy one. Okay, let me give you the brown bread. Okay, I was trying to find this recipe for years. One cup flour, one cup wheat flour. So I will grind my uh, like raisin bran. Actually, raisin bran would be really good because you could use the raisins. Uh, one cup whole grain cornmeal, but I'm using my grits in the meantime. One cup raisins, you could get those out of your raisin bran. Two cups buttermilk, I use evaporated milk and I add lemon, like for a cup, two tablespoons lemon or uh, vinegar to give you a nice thick um, buttermilk or any kind of milk. Um, three quarter cup molasses, two teaspoons baking soda, and a teaspoon salt. So you mix it all up and it's like the fry bread. If you let it set for a few minutes, it kind of raises and your bread is going to turn out. And my friend used to make it in a coffee can. So I saved my tomato can. You can see it's kind of stained with tomatoes, but I'm going to try to bake my brown bread in it this next time. But when I'm getting the, um, the bread like I am at the pantry, I don't need bread. I do need to make some applesauce, though, so I can uh, use my apples and make some applesauce bread.
Okay, so uh, I wanted to mention that. You guys got to get these. You have may have noticed a lot of prophets. God has told me. The Blessed Mary talks to me in my mind. Stuff like this. God has told me. Okay. The best way to make sure you're not deceived is. Try to stay to the actual scripture. Usually if God wants to speak to you. A scripture will come into your mind. That's God. The, the devil though is good at scriptures. Matthew 23 and 4. If any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is a Christ, or there, believe it not. So if they go, go to this special site, apparitions are going to appear, it is written in red, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is a Christ, or there, believe it not. Now, 24. Now, this is what, was really going to help for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they indicating there will be more than one shall deceive the very elect so um it's not to say that their prophecies won't come true that there can be some miraculous stuff so the way we um, we avoid this is if if they tell us to do something totally contrary to the scripture, we go eh eh. Okay, now who is the elect? The elect is to choose a person. So you know the antichrist will be a person for public office, usually by an election. So the elected official. That's not what they're talking about. In Christianity, particularly within the theological framework of Calvinism, elect, elect, election in, I don't know what this word, choosing a particular person or group of people to particular task or relationship, especially to do with eternal life. So we really don't need other, like, I mean, there are religious rele leaders but if they deviate from the written word, then, you know, it's not a good idea to listen to them. This is a good one, Jews. The eternal nature of the Jewish people's covenant with God formed the bulwark of the Arabianic community's response to the new religion of Christianity, which claims it believes were now the elect of God or constituted the true Israel. So, um, I'm not trying to pick on them. I'm just saying that that is something to think about. Okay, now they're trying to say if apparitions come that give dire warnings, don't listen to them. That's not from God. Um, I don't know. It depends what the dire, um, the dire instructions are. Like the Adventists were all murdered in Africa when they were told to go to the church. You know, the, um, I guess it was the government was on the rampage. And so they told the pastor, tell the people to come to church and we're going to kill your family, which he probably did anyway. And then they killed everybody. Going back to the go here, go there thing. All right, this is the all-time best one. AI is going to make religious videos. So we won't be able to tell that it's the AI because we're going to be deceived. And so I would say is what they're going to do with the AI is they're going to put out doctrine that is not exactly um, in line with the Bible. Um, possibly some kind of uh, antichrist type person. Um, a lot of people are saying this is clearly the end of the age. Okay, 
there are signs, there are wars, there are rumors of wars, there are floods, there are, um, you know, dire circumstances, but uh, they've been ever since a lot of people are looking to the return rather than the fact that he's already been here. And so um, I think it's going to be pretty easy to be deceived if you're not pretty much convinced that a deceiver will come first. <laughs> there will be a falling away. So that means people will fall away from the, the doctrine and then, you know, bad things are going to happen because the AI is very persuasive. It, I heard, and I like this one too, is it wants to learn us. It wants to learn the collective and learn what we're going to listen to. And also, um, another thing is if we don't see strong evidence of things, there is no sense in, in throwing everything in 100% in belief-wise. So, okay. I will see you tomorrow. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and God bless you all.